Hey y'all, so let's dig in. We are on just day 12, if you're following along in our book. I am victorious. And of course, today we're going to begin with defining victorious. So if the Father sees me as victorious, achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor against odds or difficulties. So I'm defined victorious here as achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor against odds or difficulties. So the basis of 31 days of how he sees me is that God looks at us through Jesus. We are constantly covered by the flowing blood of Christ, our Messiah. Isn't that good? When we feel inadequate, lost, drained, and destitute and alone, we must remember that these are emotions. And our response to these emotions must be to look at Jesus. There is not one part of this human experience that Jesus did not redeem. Our feelings and emotions were included in our redemption. Satan tries to use these against us. Though our soul is redeemed, we have to be taught how to live redeemed. I want to read through some of that again. And that when we feel inadequate, lost, drained, destitute, and alone, it's very important that we recognize those as emotions and not actual states of being. This circumstance makes me feel this way. Looking at this impossibility, I feel this way. Um, again, like we talked about last week, and we could say this over every single 31 day I am statement in that the spy said we were as grasshoppers in their sight and in ours as well. And that is how they felt looking at the situation and what they could see with their natural eyes. And, uh, you know, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. Um, there are things that I look at every day and I feel X, Y, and Z. But I have to remember and recall the Word of God, what His promises are, what He says to me. And I'm a, it's a work in progress, right? To um, reset our minds and to train ourselves to we see the problem and think about the promise. That is um, against human nature, but that's what we're talking about right here. And that though our soul is redeemed, our mind, will, and emotions, we have to be taught how to live redeemed. And I may feel inadequate, but I am not inadequate. In Christ, he has given me everything I need to live in this life. Um, I want to read just a, an excerpt from 1 Kings. Elijah. Elijah dealt with this you know we we sometimes we think that these mighty men and women of God you know it just was so easy for them and well if I had had this opportunity or if I had seen this I would have done the same thing well it's easier for us to say that because we read the story after the fact <laughs> right we we could read it all at one time and of course having the cross this being on this side of the cross we know his goodness in a different um light than they did but in first kings 18 and 19 elijah had had just my goodness blown the prophets of baal out of the water or god through elijah and so where there were 450 prophets of baal and there was one prophet of god elijah Elijah stood out boldly declaring, my God, Jehovah is the Lord, and I'm going to prove it. And that was where the um, prophets of Baal went first to see they, whose God would light the fire of the altar first. If you haven't read that account, you need to read it. It is quite powerful. It's 1 Kings 18 and 19. But on the hill of this great victory and this, you know, unparalleled proving of God, Jezebel, who was the wicked queen, says so she's going to kill Elijah. And so where Elijah had just shown out, or through Elijah, God had shown out the prophets of Baal and that God was the one true God. At the threat of death, Elijah hightails it and runs. 
he, um, in, in 1 Kings 19, verse 2, it says, Then Jezebel sent a messenger, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid and arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba of Judah, over 80 miles out of Jeze Jezebel's realm, and left his servant there. He himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a lone broom or juniper tree and asked that he might die. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, the natural feelings is maybe not that desperate or desolate, but there's there's a um, temptation for hopelessness, a temptation for I'm tired of going over the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. And while we might feel that it's hopeless, the truth of the matter is there is always hope. Always hope. And we'll pick up here tomorrow and talk a little bit more about Elijah. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.